Hey everybody, this is Amanda with Tease Original Arts, and this is my second, number two, video tutorial. I moved the camera, because uh, when I was making my last ring pour, that'd be this guy here, I figured out that I couldn't tilt it the way I wanted to and make it so that you could actually see it. So we're going to try it again. Uh, I had mixed these three colors. They were color shift paints from Folk Art. And for my medium, I used my magic sauce, uh, which is Floetrol, Glue, and GAC 800, uh, a 3 2 1 mixture. Um, I also mentioned in the other video that if you're on a budget and you want to just get going, just go to Walmart and get yourself some school glue and thin that out with water. Not too thin, though. And, uh, Get yourself some cheap 50 cent paints and mix it. I would do probably one to one. Um, I've had a lot of success with water and glue. Here's an example of a ring pour that I did last night that's water and glue. And it doesn't crack, but it's not archival. And that way you can get some poster board, paper plates. You can get some, some of these cheap little two and a half inch canvases if you want to, and you can practice on them. You can practice different techniques. Um, practice playing with colors. See what happens. Um, just do your thing. Figure out what works for you. And then you can go buy some more expensive stuff and mix a, mix a more expensive medium. Um, what, what did not work for me was the Floetrol and glue uh, mixture one-to-one -one is what I tried and that gave me lots of cracks so I won't be doing that anymore okay so I've got all these mixed I've also got in my white pour paint bottle here um, I had extra white pour paint because I also have this big one I have some pre-mixed um, Liquitex Basics and this is mixed two-to-one two parts medium one part paint and then I did the same thing with my uh, with my art with my color shift paints here. I had to add a little bit of water, and so I keep a it's pretty liquidy um, water and glue on hand for when I need to add a little bit of water to my paints to thin them out. So they say the consistency should be that of of warm butter or warm butter. <laughs> it should not be warm butter. Oh goodness, it should be that of warm honey. I've never had warm honey. But uh, I know what I like in my paint, and I know that if it's too runny, it's not going to work. So that's something you're going to have to play with, too. I keep the caps of these paint bottles. They are perfect for a canvas this size. One cap full is exactly the right amount of paint. Go figure. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, layer some paints in here, and we're going we're gonna to do a ring board. All right? And they say that the, you know, I, I like to, I'm not going to say that they say things. I'm going to put my black in the bottom. And then I'm going to put my green next to it. Do, 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 do. Ooh. Oh, I started to say they say. Yeah, I'll tell you what they say. They say that the more layers you have, the more chance you have to get mud. I don't want mud. So I try to layer things no more than twice. You'll notice my paints aren't sinking or anything. They're doing a good job of staying on top of each other. And let's see if I can get a little bit more green on there. Okay, so you'll see a lot of people add paint to the corners of their canvases. Um, that, that helps with the flow. Usually when you put your paint on, it's going to come out in a circle. So this sort of turns your canvas into a circle. All right, so a ring pour, you just 
makes slow circular motions. Here we go. Three, four, circular, 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 circular. Ooh, here comes my darks. Circular, 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 circular. Okay, I'll stop saying circular. I heard you. That's annoying. Mm -hmm. You know what else is annoying? Silence. Or as I like to call it, crickets. Crickets are annoying. I'm going to walk my ring over to the edge here. Because I want to. I've never done that before. I just thought maybe I would try it. All right. There's my ring. I guess I'll put him on top of. I'll put him on top of a cup so that I can torch him. Ooh, wait till you see the torch. I told my husband, honey, I need a torch. You have a torch I can borrow? <laughs> Why? Yes, I do. <laughs> Alrighty then. So I just give it a quick torch there. Pops all the air bubbles. See? All right. Now, I like to leave it sit for a minute. Got paint on my arm. This is why I don't wear gloves, people, because why wear gloves when you're going to have paint everywhere? I probably have it on my face. Okay. So I'm going to start tipping it. I'm going to tilt it this way. And then I'm going to bring it back to center. There we go. And then I'm going to tilt it this way. And I'm going to bring it back to center. And then I'm going to tilt it towards that. Oh, let's tilt it back this way first. There we go. And we'll bring it back to center. And then we're going to tilt it to this side. And back to center. Back to center. And then we're going to tilt it that way. Which you probably can't see. But that's okay. I'm not going to worry about it. And then back to center. All right. Now. I'm going to make sure that I have paint on all my edges. And I'm going to get rid of all the extra paint that's fallen off the bottom because on these canvas boards, that extra paint that's on the bottom will warp it. And then what you could do is you can sort of manipulate your, your artwork here and you can slide it around until the colors are aesthetically pleasing to you. And yes, I know that I'm taking my drippings over top of a bucket of paint. Usually I don't do this this way, but <laughs> I'm recording a video and I want you to see how I'm tilting and stuff. And I found out on my first attempt that it was kind of hard, kind of difficult to do that. All right, we've got all the corners covered and tilt. All right, now what should we do? What's going to look good? Hmm? I think the other one looks better than this one, personally. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to 
tilt this this way. There you go. Ta da! Moving it around. There you go. Come on down here. That's getting kind of stretched out there. So let's pull them back this side now. There we go. See what I meant when I said that that cap full was just enough paint to do one of these? Just enough and you get lots of drippings. All right, try not to get my hand in the camera lens. All right, put this this way. So it's starting to pull apart. And usually when I'm doing this part, I'm always thinking to myself, what would I do different if I was to do it again with these colors? And I would not use as much black for one. And I wouldn't walk it to the edge. Remember how I told you I was walking it to the edge? Yeah, I wouldn't do that again. Because that's where I got this. I'm not really a fan of the way that looks. So I think I'm going to go back this way a little bit now. It's really, it's just a matter of, you know, what looks good to you. You gotta keep in mind your basics of composition, things like that. These are colors that I normally wouldn't even consider putting together. But I'm playing. All right, now I'm gonna torch it again. And no, I'm not gonna torch it while it's in my hand, but thanks for thinking of me. I heard you. I heard you. All right, so that's kind of the way that one looks. I'm not super excited about that. This is the one I did earlier on the first video when I was having a problem tilting it so that everybody could see. I think that one looks much better. Um, okay, that's it. If you liked the video, please tell me you liked it by saying fantabulous in the comments. Also, uh, please share the video. Please subscribe and please click like. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell the world. All right. Later. Bye-bye. GoPro stop recording.